landslide was just like a gatekeeper between a Russian and two Indonesian webmasters who supplied customers with pictures of child abuse in exchange for $29.95. This is the site that they had to, they had to log on to. And you can see here, emblazoned right down the middle, it says child porn. Click here. Exit, enter. And here you've got two options. Click here for child porn, click here for preteen porn. And underneath it, it says Lolita fucking hardcore. Just preteen hardcore, nothing else, no bullshit. So, having accessed that site, you're not really in any doubt of what you're, what you're looking or what you're, you're getting into. You're actually choosing to see these, these images. By paying to access the website, each of the 7,000 subscribers in Britain is creating the demand for internet paedophilia and is guilty of the crime of inciting another to distribute indecent images of children. If they have copied the images onto their computer, they are also guilty of making indecent images. Yeah, Governor, you're cool, there is an added concern that every name on the landslide list could be an immediate risk to children. The suspects are from all walks of life, including accountants, company directors, teachers, policemen, TV executives, and musicians. The rock star Pete Townsend has admitted using his credit card to enter an internet site advertising child pornography. But he denied being a paedophile and said he did it purely to see what was there. Dan, back of the car, passenger side. Because of the scale of Operation Or, the child protection teams of the Metropolitan Police need to call on the help of other units. In preparation for a day of synchronised arrests, the head of the paedophile unit briefs them at Scotland Yard. On the 6th of August 2001, Thomas Reedy was sentenced to 1,335 years in prison. That's recently been reduced to, I think, 128 years in prison. But strangely enough, he won't see the light of day. Um, Janice Reedy was sentenced to 14 years in prison and Landslide Incorporated were fined some six million dollars. This is Thomas and Janice Reedy. By the time they were arrested they were extremely wealthy. What we're actually talking about here is child abuse. And for those of you that haven't ever seen this child abuse, we are talking about the rape of babies. We are talking about bondage of children aged five years old. It is all sexual abuse of children. There is nothing pleasant in any of these sites. The people that download this stuff assist in child abuse. And there is a large volume of research that now tends to indicate that people that download and view these images will become abusers. But I would argue still that anybody that downloads this image is already taking part in abuse. If you knock on a door and you get no reply, do not walk away. You have a warrant that gives you a right to enter by force. Please do that, because the vast majority of our suspects are expecting us to knock on their door at some point. They have all seen the paper, they have all seen the media. And they will wait inside their house in the hope that you disappear. You've got a power to use force. Please enter and please search and seize. Police! 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 Nationally, we have a suicide rate of between 5 and 7 percent for people arrested for offences involving child abuse or indecent images. We've had as many people kill themselves as we have identified those that abuse children. When you go through the door and show people that you're executing a warrant under the Protection of Children Act 1978, you have just blown the biggest hole in somebody's life that could possibly ever happen. Until now, 
They thought that they were safe in their environment, downloading child abuse images on a computer. They thought that it was acceptable for them to download indecent images on their computer. And you've suddenly gone in and told them, actually, it's not. You're a paedophile. Open the door now! Stop it! Stop it! Please! We ruin their lives. If we find images, they get convictions, they go on a sex offenders register. If these people have families, some of them won't by the time you leave that premises. Some of them will not have a job by the time you've completed and charged and convicted them. And for a lot of the, these people, the stress is far too much. So please bear that in mind. When you deal with them, deal with them with respect. Oh, oh boy, it's no problem, nothing to worry about. Is Gary Clement here? Yeah. I'm a police officer. Um, I'd like to come in and speak to him. Okay. Please, thank you very much. Always nervous before something like this. Because it's a big thing interrupting people's uh, personal lives. <clears throat> you know, we want to, want to get things right, we want to ensure that we research everything as much as we can before we do something like this, and that we um, try to ensure that we count for their safety and the you know, safety of the people that were going on the search. At the end of the day, it's nothing personal, it's, uh, it's a job that has to be done. Morning. Police from the Serious Crime Group, Scotland Yard. Can we just come and have a chat with you? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, you've got to appreciate it. It does come as a big shock to these people. Um, someone knocking on the door early in the morning. Um, and they don't come from the sort of households where that's, that's common. Not common, where it's un completely unknown, really. Right, nothing to worry about. It's the police. We've got ID here. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Detective Sergeant yeah. Atwood from the Serious Crime Group. Yeah. I'm looking for. Yeah. Is that you? Yeah. May I come in, please? Extra one five eight. Good morning. You're a call. You're in front of the station. If you can let us know as soon as possible where the occupation of your subject and whether there's any children and ages uh, on the premises. Two computers. children. It's a bit of a squeeze, but if he gets in the back there, Trevor. And you think that site was making a million pounds a week? And, and people from every walk of life, and everybody we're dealing with at the moment, they're all middle class. And people you would meet and think, well, what a lovely person, what an interesting person. Could be your neighbour, could be anybody. I can't believe it. there's so many of them. Ordinary people, there's nothing sleazy about them, there's nothing, you know, like ordinary people, you just can't tell. It's a big, it's a really scary thing. And if there's that much interest in it, how can you ever deal with it? And these people have realised it's not all men and dirty men. He was employed as a teacher uh, yesterday, um, but what he's saying is obviously his result of what's happened this morning, he was only suspended. This morning at um, 20 past six, we attended the address to execute a search warrant, which was granted under Section 4 of the Protection of Children Act 1978. The door was answered and uh, we were invited in, and he was arrested for incitement to distribute child pornography. Um, it's part of the inquiry into information passed to the UK by authorities in the USA concerning persons who are said to have accessed sites containing indecent images of children. 
understand the reasons why you've been arrested. Yeah, I understand what the charge is, yeah. I have been charged with you've been arrested. Oh, I'm sorry, but yeah. yeah. Today's action is the single largest operation mounted in a child protection capacity so far by the Metropolitan Police. And it has resulted today, so far, in the arrest of 34 men from across the capital. In addition, some 28 children at risk, at risk now of being abused, have been identified. And appropriate steps have been taken with partner agencies to ensure that all those children are now safe from harm. Can I just give, a, just before we go on, can I just give you an example perhaps of the complexity of some of the uh, individual investigations? One job in the Met, not today but last week, under Operation Or, 12 computers seized, 2,530 CD-ROMs seized, 518 floppy disks, 55 videos, 99 films, that's one individual. So that perhaps gives you um, a feeling for the scale of this. Each arrest generates more work for the police. Many of the suspects have more than one computer, and every computer, CD-ROM, floppy disk and video must be forensically analysed. Suspects are usually released on bail, so the analysis of their computers is prioritised based on their access to children. Gary Clement is a primary school teacher. If you need anything, just press the buzzer. An initial search of his computer reveals that he has downloaded thousands of indecent images of children. I mean, look at that little girl. Mm. We've got 18 files in, in level 5. This is a movie one of a girl being tied up and whipped and objects inserted into... Well, she's I would say she's about 7. 7, 8, mm. yeah. Little girl. You can see where the yeah. ropes are going into her leg. Yeah. That's in the kitchen, on the kitchen it's, table. Yeah, there's a cooker. There's a sink. And then you've got a girl that's being gagged. Another one being gagged. Oh, gagged yeah. and uh, stuff inserted. That's unusual. Female. And that's the same suit, that's part of the level five ones. That's unusual having a female. I just can't imagine what goes through a person's mind to keep these sort of images and a person in a position of trust that this man was who's teaching children of this age such a large qu quantity of level yes. five I mean that's a dog it's a dog yeah that's horrifying and there is one which I, I noticed on, on one of the floppy disks that uh, you actually see the nappy being removed on uh, again little babies I mean, what age is the baby wearing nappy up to? What, 18 months, yeah. probably? Two. Within a few months of the start of Operation Or, there is a huge collection of computers waiting to be analysed by forensic specialists. As the police wait for the results from the computer lab, they are continually arresting more suspects and the work piles up. While trying to keep pace with Operation Or, the Child Protection Major Investigation Team receives intelligence that a group of men may be setting up a website to sell internet paedophilia from a base in London. I'll give you a very brief overview of, of what we're going to do today. It's an intelligence-led operation concerning three main targets. The information that we've had so far is that the two targets in London with the third target are engaged in the distribution of child pornography on the internet. The information that we have is that they travel abroad, they make films themselves of children being sexually abused. The films are then transported back to the United Kingdom 
when they're back in the United Kingdom, they get placed onto a pay-per-view website. The suspects have been under investigation for weeks, and the police would have wanted more time for research. But they discover that one of the men has a child living in his house, and they are forced to act immediately. One suspect is believed to have weapons in his house. One of the targets, Gerald Crompton, is not at home. Travel documents found in his house suggest he is in Thailand. At first, the search looks promising. Crompton has converted his garage into a state-of-the-art home cinema. Teeny Extremes, 183, five-pound battle. Teeny Lucian Master. Japan, Danish singles number three, Japanese, Danish. production of internet paedophilia. They now have to wait to see what he has on his computer. Look. No evidence is found at the homes of the other suspects, but one of them has over a million pornographic images on his computer. He claims that his business is adult pornography. Forensic analysts estimate that it will take more than a year to check every image for paedophilia. Gary Clement is the primary school teacher arrested as part of Operation Or. As well as paying to view the landslide website, he has downloaded over 13,000 images of children being sexually abused. Taking you back to when you first discovered that you were suffering from stress and depression, explain to me how this has come about. Is it just to do with the schooling, as you said? It was all factors, really. I mean, the problem I have is I tend to store emotions and hide things, basically build up walls. And I've stored so much for such a long time, I couldn't hold it in any longer. Right. And in your first interview, you said that when you do get depressed, you view child images. It's very, very hard to explain. 
because of most of my problems were with school, I was tended to, I became to dislike the children, that I didn't before. You came to? Dislike the children. Dislike them. Yeah. And so the emotion I was feeling was a lot of anger. So what I do is when I came back from school, I spend an hour just getting out of my system, as I mentioned before, you know. Were indecent images of children? Yes. When I felt the worst, the images were the worst. What do you mean by the worst? Um, the harder the image, the younger the child, the worse the scene that was going on. Right, Mr Clements, the first charge is on or before the 17th of December 2002, within the jurisdiction of the Central Criminal Court, you made 2,787 indecent images of children contained on floppy disks, and that's contrary to Section 11A of the Protection of Children Act 1978. Number two, on or before the 17th of December 2002, within the jurisdiction of the Central Criminal Court, you made 3,432 indecent images of children under 16 years, held on floppy disk, namely exhibit JJG-7. That's also contrary to section 11A, Protection of Children Act 1978. I've just got to caution you again, and that is you do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention now something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. 1513? No reply. I believe the um, officers want to make representation on whether to, uh, to withhold bail in this matter. Mr Clement has now been charged with making indecent images of children. The charge is concerned over 13,000 images retrieved from floppy disks and CDs. Up until now, Clement re returned to the police station today and Clement was unaware of the charges he was now faced. And now there is a strong likelihood that he will receive a long custodial sentence as outlined in R.V. Oliver and Copine guidelines. Clement has also been identified as being a collector of vast amount of indecent pornographic material and due to his insatiable appetite he will commit further offences whilst on bail. Due to the high level of offenders self-harming or becoming victims of vigilantes it is felt that he should be kept in custody for his own protection and welfare and also during an interview he has admitted that he contemplated committing suicide and also has admitted on tape that he's committed a further offence of viewing indecent images uh, whilst on bail. No my objections to bail Sarge. So do you wish to make any representations? I don't intend to give up. I don't commit suicide or whatever. I intend to get over this and get on with my life. Yeah. I've been asked to come back three times. Each time I've come back as required. I don't know what's going to happen to me. Yeah. I will come back for the court case. I will stand up and I will face whatever is given to me. And I'll get on with my life. I mean, it's my intention to get back on with my life. Unfortunately, I believe you would uh, commit further offences and for your own welfare. I'm afraid I'm refusing bail and uh, we'll take you to court tomorrow and uh, then the magistrates can decide. Okay, sir. If you'd like to go with the, the officers. Gary. Thank you. Clement is released on bail by a magistrate. At the Crown Court, he pleads guilty to making indecent images of children. Because of the number and severity of the images, he is sentenced to two years imprisonment with an extra three years extended license. He is placed on the sex offenders register for ten years and is banned from working with children for life. The lead story in nearly all the tabloids is the denial by the rock singer Pete Townsend that he's a paedophile. He admits that he downloaded child pornography from the internet, but says it was for research purposes. I'm not another glitter is the headline in the news of the world. denied that he is a paedophile who uses child pornography from the internet. There have been newspaper suggestions that police have been investigating a rock star who used his credit card simply to see what was on one of these sites and there's research for a book he's doing about what he says are his own experiences of having been abused as a child. I rather fear that tomorrow morning's front page is still going to be dominated by the story that dominates today's papers, which is Pete Townsend, who the Daily Mail said yesterday is allegedly to be questioned by Scotland Yard for having visited a paedophile site.
Only a handful of senior officers knew that Townsend was on the list. He was not considered to be a high-priority target, but their hand has been forced by the revelations in the media. A team of Operation Awe detectives is called to an early morning briefing. Ladies and gents, good morning. Those of you who have been following the media over the weekend know why we're here. Um, and the son have told us what uh, we've got to do today. Um, I want to use this to tell you exactly what's going on. The original list that came out from ENSYS to the Met had about 960 names on it. I made the decision that we wouldn't treat <coughs> Pete Townsend differently to any other person on that list. He would fall into the lower category of risk to children. Uh, his kids are grown up. He's, I think he's got a 12-year-old that lives with the mother. Uh, and the very prominence of his position doesn't give him uh, sort of a particular access to kids because he's always going to have a, a great entourage of people around. We work through the targets as they were researched. And as you know, we had a big raid day on the Tuesday um, before the Christmas week and we cleared our backlog of uh, people waiting arrests. On the Thursday of that week, so two days after, uh, our press officer contacts me and says, I've had a phone call from Ben Taylor on the Daily Mail that says he's been told that we arrested Pete Townsend on Tuesday. Have you? Now, our press office did not know anything about Pete Townsend being on the list. Very few people knew, as I said. I was absolutely flabbergasted. My response to the press officer was, you can tell the Daily Mail, they've got it wrong. Uh, he hasn't been arrested. There are a number of names floating around, and his isn't the only one. Those of you that have been reading the media this weekend, it talks about two Labour politicians. And I can tell you, I'm not aware of any Labour politicians. I know the names that they're talking about, and they're not on the list. Friday evening, uh, 11 o'clock, my mobile goes. Hello, it's Bernie from the press office. You don't know me, but... Um, and Bernie, please feel free to jump in uh, if I get any of this wrong. Bernie had been contacted by The Sun to say that the Daily Mail's front page for Saturday was going to be rock star bombshell pleased to quiz British multimillionaire musician over internet charpel. I read it and thought, OK, you know, someone's keeping them informed of what we're doing. And I thought we'll survive that until about 10 o'clock when Bernie phones me to say, um, I don't know which paper it was, but um, a newspaper was going to phone Pete Townsend direct to ask him to comment. Uh, News, of, News of the World. Um, and when she said, well, who else knows about this? I'm told about 50 journalists who had already gone to his house. Um, and I actually sent Mick Connor down to go and have a look. Um, and Mick will say, you know, there were ladders pushed up against his wall. He was completely confronted by it. So what you read in the papers today about how he decided to sort of volunteer that it was probably him, um, I actually think you'll find uh, is slightly inaccurate. You know, the, the tabloid media forced his hand. He had no option. By the evening, I was actually much more chirpy because once I was listening to the conversations uh, that... Peter was having with the media and the admissions he was making, um, I was realising how much it was going to give you as the sort of interview and investigating team to talk to him about. He's talking about um, seeking permission three months ago when he accessed uh, the websites. Now, we all know that the Operation All material is from 98-99. I don't know the exact date of when uh, he bought his access. 15th of May, 99? Yeah. Well, the reality is, he's admitting to offences now. We've got evidence for offences in 99. The reality is, you know, he's making admissions to things that we haven't even asked him about yet. Um, my guess is he's probably being advised by uh, a PR consultant as opposed to a lawyer, and his lawyer is going to be in some serious concerns before he meets uh, you today. Jeb is just called from outside the premises. There are approximately 12 media personnel camped outside with sorted cameras. She's made a few discreet inquiries and apparently they haven't seen him since Saturday evening. They don't think he's in the premises. 
Um, there's some suggestion that he's gone off with Mick Jagger came and not called for him and said coming out to play and they've gone off somewhere. Um, there's a suggestion there's a garage at the back of the address that leads out to another road. I think you might have got out of the back way. That's the cottage. Right. Um, well, that garage down there. So there's a possibility he's gone, he's not at the address. Yesterday morning, well, football's off again. Yeah. Yesterday, because they're frozen bitches. Yeah. Been paid six weeks. Played on the afternoon. Then. No, I watched it on telly. I watched the pay per view. But it was a good one, good game to watch. It was actually, yeah. From a from a coaching point of view, for managers, it was a nightmare. Mm. But uh, for, for action and um, crowd enjoyment, it was very good. You don't get many four threes anymore, no, no. Yeah, it's all good. Hello, Brian Cole speaking. Hello, Mr. Lux, thank you for phoning me. Um, are there any problems at all that you perceive with, um, at this stage? So, you, um, Mr. Townsend and you are going to be at the house at 3 p.m., as agreed. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, look forward to seeing you. Bye on now. Yeah? Yeah, it's fine. It was mid-afternoon Pete Townsend arrived at his London home. Sitting in the back of the car on the left, he was surrounded by his legal team. The man whose music talked about a new generation has denied he's a paedophile. He says he did look at a child porn website, but only for research into a book he's writing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't the search of Townsend's house will require a large team of detectives. So they can arrive together, they rendezvous first in Richmond Park. This is the car park here. This is the car park here. Uh, Charlie, you're welcome. No <laughs> problem. Yeah. Uh, my name is John Cohen, and I'm Pete Townsend solicitor. Um, I just want to tell you that we are meeting the police at the house here at three o'clock by appointment by arrangement with the police so you will shortly see some police cars arrive i imagine that's what it's about what will happen then? don't know up to the police if he starts going into one about being abused in the past who's going to deal with that well, if he wants to talk about abuse he's experienced as a child of course we'll do it but it's a separate thing on another day Not and we'll appoint an flo to him if that's the case not an idea to introduce him to someone today at the, at the, at the end. Yeah. Just to say, well, Family this, on this is so your, if you want to talk about abuse you've experienced in the past. Is family liaison appropriate? I think it's important. If you want someone needs to talk to, whoever's investigating it, it's all different. So you can, it's got someone you can trust and talk to. Did the police approach you or did you approach the police? Um, we approached the police. And what did you say to them? Um, that we should meet. But Pete Townsend denies the allegations that he was a paedophile or he's gone onto this internet site. Oh God, has he said that? Okay. The solicitor has made an announcement that they're expecting the imminent, imminent arrival of Scotland Yard detectives. Yes, to the waiting press. Oh, what a huh? Why did he go onto the internet site? Let's go, let's go. Apparently he's just put out a press conference, the, the solicitor at the door, saying that he's invited Scotland Yard to attend at three o'clock today. No. Yeah. no. How to put spin on things. That's the press, I'll tell you that now. Yeah, it's the press, yeah. yeah. Straight on down. Right. If you could just go slowly. Yeah? Yeah. This is the yeah. cottage on the right-hand side here. Okay. okay. Yeah, this is the yeah. press here. Mm -hmm. They're waiting for us. This is his large house 
up on the right hand side here. Large conservatory outside. See? Yeah. There we go. Gentlemen of the press. Let's go. Excuse me, please. Can you tell us why you're here? Hello? It's a DS Coles. Thank you. Do you know if and where the press officer is for this? Because we've at the address, we've got hundreds of press around us. Um, then there are they're obviously asking to speak to a press officer. Right, just to let you know, there's a press officer on the way now to give you some kind of statement. You let us through. Okay. Mr Townsend has been arrested and a search is about to be conducted. And there's quite a number of officers in there but it's a big house and uh, it's going to be going to be split into teams. Um, a lot of quite expensive musical equipment, especially computer equipment. Um, this will be probably be left behind. Uh, we've got our own technical experts with us who will be able to decide what needs to be taken and what can be left behind. Um, there are three solicitors in there with him, all from the same firm, all being very cooperative and uh, other than the press scrum around the front of the premises. No real problems so far. <laughs> Hello, I'm learning from the press office. Oh, okay. Hello, just to say... Oh, okay, thank, thanks for the photo there. Um, just to say, we're not doing any statements or what have you. I will give you an update as soon as I possibly can. Okay. Um, I'm not doing it. This is off camera. Oh, is that all right? We'll just yeah, be on camera. No, no. no we're just, I'm just handing out a pre-prepared statement. Oh, there. Oh, okay, once I've got any idea, 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 I will let you know. Um, just for advice, yeah. Well, that would obviously, there's, you know, there's quite a lot, a lot, lot of media. We went in just to introduce ourselves and explain the process. That's fairly really normal. Yeah. And then the other officers, the other officers go in to conduct the search of the area, the premises rather. Okay. So that's, that's so they weren't normal. formally. Yeah. No. That's fairly normal. They'll, they'll, they'll present a warrant and formally do that, will they? Or yes. They'll, so they, they'll hand him a search warrant. Yes. And when, when was that obtained? Today. Bernie, do you have? Specialist IT officers who can search computers, yes. etc. Here, yeah. how many do you have? Yes. Yeah. Again, I'm not yeah, going okay. to that stage, but so yes, the computer will search. How long have you been here? Day. <laughs> half, <laughs> half, 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 it allows us to have a look in and see are these people charging users. That's our business. That's what we're after. We're not after porn surfers. The problem is you don't know till you look. We don't know if we're going to find holiday snaps of a person that we're with with young children in inappropriate circumstances. The US Post Inspection Service data gives us the ability to go into these people's houses that we haven't had before. Um, it, it's indicative behaviour, if you like, uh, but uh, the reality is none of us uh, are saying that he's a paedophile, none of us are saying he's a child abuser. It, it's far too early to say that, uh, but what people mustn't lose sight of, and this story has done a, 
uh, this subject um, a lot to actually bring it to the public attention, children have to be raped and buggered to make these images. And it's a bit like drugs. Whilst there is a demand, there is always someone prepared to supply. And if people are prepared to spend money to pay for this sort of material, then the reality is children have got to be abused to provide it. Police are this evening searching the home of the rock guitarist Pete Townsend after he admitted looking at child pornography on the internet. His name was on a list passed to British police by the FBI. Well, of the 7,000 or so people brought to the attention of the operation or inquiry, Pete Townsend is clearly the most high profile. And despite him saying he's done nothing wrong, he'll now be the subject of a lengthy police investigation. The police plan to interview Townsend at Twickenham Police Station. Now, the likelihood is we will bail him. Now, what he does with his lawyers after us is a matter for him. You know, the thing for me is about managing the situation when, yeah. when he comes here. Um, you know, the front office, you know, we still require people to come into the building. It's a very, very small building, right. you know, in terms of public access. So clearly I'm going to have to think about where they can go. I don't want them standing in the front office, you know, or anywhere near the front office environment. If they want to stand outside, mm -hmm. um, you know, and allow members of the public to come in, normal course of business, then I'm happy with that. The, the thing is, as I understand it, he is going to come out the front door. Mm. Um, he has to come out the front door of the house yeah. so without that, getting to our car. They've had yeah. the opportunity there. So they might have follow. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But they, at least they've had it there, so yeah. they won't be as desperate to no. get a, the, no. a shot. And I think the imperative one will be when he actually comes out of the Comes out of here, which we'll have to Because they'll be it. looking for him yeah. to, to make some sure. sort of comment about what sure. has happened. My thoughts are really that we need to do this as quickly without too much disruption to the normal yeah. business of the building. Yeah. Um, and we have to consider his welfare. Sure. I mean, he, he has been treated differently to other people we've arrested yeah. because of the media, and I think yeah. we have to yeah. balance that. You know, we wait and see what happens when he is here. Yeah. Well, I don't know, know when we can risk assess that. Can we drop back and let it in? He's coming right back in there. Could you all move back, please? Could you all make room for the car, please? The police are trying to treat Townsend like any other suspect but few are subjected to such intense public scrutiny. In an attempt to avoid a media rush on Townsend when he is brought out, the detectives park a car at his front door. It is a decoy. They plan to leave from his garage at the back, where only a few photographers are waiting. Passenger, got him well anyway. All right, mate. Bye. Hold on. Yeah. What's he wearing? Just the same as before. In the BMW. Yeah. Back yeah. the car, passenger side. Yeah, he's gone. He definitely got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a silver Toyota Corolla. Yeah. It should be there any second. He's gone. He's gone. Well, I don't know where he's going. I just know he's left. So what's the problem? No, sorry, it's just wearing a black bomber jacket. Excuse me. I couldn't see behind any through the blood, but we only think tricking him. It's obviously a story that he knew was going to be big and that he knew that his credit card details had been uh, accepted onto this website, he knew he'd been tracked down, and obviously this is a part of a much bigger operation going on here in the UK, as Di mentioned there, Operation All, some 1,300 people in the UK already uh, been uh, arrested, uh, charged, 
fire this big uh, sting that's going on in the UK here. He also admitted that on one occasion he did pay with his credit card uh, to view some uh, uh, child pornography on the internet, uh, but again he claimed he hadn't downloaded anything, and he claimed also that this was to do with research for a book he was writing. A few minutes later he pulled into Twickenham Police Station, a short distance from his home, to face further questions. <laughs> the police tonight took away several items from Pete Townsend's house, including videotapes and computer consoles. Some of the detectives involved are forensic computer officers. They'll spend the next phase of the inquiry delving into every minute detail of Pete Townsend's computer world. Mr. Townsend's home address uh, in possession of a search warrant um, in connection with child pornography. At 3.03 p.m. I arrested him for suspicion of possession of child pornography uh, and also inciting another to distribute child pornography. Okay, do you understand we've been brought here? Um, inciting others to do so. Inciting another to another to distribute child pornography and also suspected possession of child pornography. Three hundred three, Tom. Arrest on these things. Three hundred three. Yeah, that's correct. Where's the arrest? It's a home address. Four names. Peter. Or? Four names, please. Peter. Dennis. Dennis. Land. Nineteenth of May, nineteen forty-five. How tall you are? Just, just under six foot. And your place of birth, please. Eisenhower. C-O-L-E-S? C-O-L-E-S, yes, it's Brian, B-R-I-A-N, Cole. D-S? Yeah, D-S. And? Uh, M-I-T West. M-I-T West is like a station, is it? Uh, it's, it's a five. You lost in the case as well? Uh, yes. Okay, Mr. Townsend, whilst you're at the police station, you have certain rights. The first of those is to speak to an independent solicitor. Free of charge, you have one present, okay? The second is to have someone told you you've been arrested. You can also consult the Codes of Practice, which is a book of ours that covers our powers and procedures, okay? Do you want anyone informed that you've been arrested? Yes. You do. Who do you want to inform? Sorry, do I want to inform? Anyone informed? Sorry, I thought you asked me if I'd been informed. No, do you want anyone informed? Um, do you want to consult the Codes of Practice of ours that covers our powers and procedures? No. Thank okay. you. Here's a copy of your rights and entitlements. I need to sign as such that you receive those, please. Two signatures. One there to say that I've given you your rights and I've given you a copy of them. That's just, that's just up here. And on the next line there to say that you want to speak to a solicitor as you have one present. Thank you.
there's a form now I've got to read over to everybody that comes in the police station. They might sound personal, the questions, but it's to try and help people out, those people that need help or are at risk, okay? Are you uh, suffering from the illness, injury, or medical or mental health condition? Mm, no. Okay, you're on the medication for anything at the moment? No. Have you ever tried to harm yourself in the past? No. Has help we give to people with reading problems? You okay with your reading? Reading. Has help we get reading problems? You okay no, with reading, reading problems. Yeah. Hearing is a bit dodgy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, there's help we give to people with learning difficulties who went to a special school who suffer from mental health problems. Do you need that help at all? Do you need help for any other reason? Mm, not that I can think of. Obviously, if you can think of anything that comes to light, just let me know, OK? Um, there's also a drug referral scheme, op scheme operates at this police station. If you're interested, I can arrange for you to be seen by an independent drugs worker in due course. Are you interested in that at all? No, thank you. Sweet, but either. Two more signatures, please, just in there, to say that I've read you those questions out. And overleaf, to say that you don't want to see a drugs worker. Can you phone up Dr. Oliver and just see? She's ready to attend, thank you. or any of us, okay? Or my aid your escape, you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, so you've got some answer. Can I help you? Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here, if you just bear with us one second. Someone from Rogers. No, you want to speak to me? No. Yes, I think that. Take possession of four exhibits from Mr Townsend's business premises. 31 pages of paper yep. contained in a file. Marked Internet Child Abuse. Okay, that's that one complete now, is it? Yeah. Okay. And there's three Sheffield Bank statements. February 2002, July 2002. Last one. C497-6252. Barclay card statement. August 2002. from that address. Right, anything else we've got to look in as well on the customer? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of other stuff on, en route. Okay. How serious are the charges he could face? Potentially very serious. Just possession of indecent images of children could give him five years in jail. It all depends on the number of offences and the scope of those offences. Now, Pete Townsend himself, of course, has said that he only went into one internet site once, and that was only for research purposes. But there have been all manner of groups, including children's charities, lining up today to say that there's simply no defence for this and that just looking is illegal. Sure. Okay. Okay. You'll, you'll come and get me in here once you've done that. Well. Sorry, yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 He would like to come and see you. He's been a good tea maker as well. We can't go and see if he's good, though. I can't go and see if he's good, though. I'm a champion, Greg. Yes. He's going to be no allocations. The child is. The wrong from that, from him. There was going to be no allegations. There was going to be some therapy, different ways of value, and then one of that. So far, so I'm still alive. All we can do, we can do, Riley, is give him the option. Give, the give him a contact. If he, a later date, he wants to talk about yeah, what's happened to him as a child, um, we can pick it up from there as a support for him. But, yeah, there's obviously issues there that have been unresolved. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Because the office has been made, so they're quite aware of it. And we'll, we'll make are. it again before before he goes. Yeah. Let him know who he can contact if he wants to talk about it. Uh, 
Among the property seized from Townsend's home are 12 computers, various diaries and notes, and a copy of the statement he made to the press when the story broke. It is not until his computers have been examined that the police will know if there is any further evidence against him. But he has publicly admitted that he paid to view the landslide website, which in itself is a crime of incitement. The police are now ready to formally interview him. You've been arrested for suspected possession of child pornography and inciting another to distribute child pornography. You understand? Yeah. Have you got anything to say about that at this stage? Um, I did subscribe to that website on that day. I felt that I, using my real name, that I would be able to enter and research and see what was going on on the website. That's what happened and I greatly regret inciting others to do so. I was planning to campaign, I was in the middle of a campaign to try to shut down the user groups and to, or to start a lobby, a voice to shut down the user groups and I wanted to know whether what was going to happen is that I was going to come up against a lot of apologists who said, said to me that this is not really going on, what's really going on is uh, just money changing hands and, and I wanted to see the reality of it because what was being supplied free uh, on advertising banners was so horrific. Alberto, did it contain child pornography? I can't remember, I just remember being, it may have had images on it of, 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 of children, they may have been in a state of undress, I can't really recall. I certainly don't remember, I don't, they, what, they had not been burned into my subconscious and my memory in the way that the first images that I stumbled upon on the listings, which were free, right. those I remember very well. And those were the ones which really burned me up because it was maybe less than seven keystrokes in Google that, that got me to that place where there was a list in front of me and I thought my son as a young boy could so easily stumble upon this and I, I, I wanted to see what was going on in the real world in there, and I understand that it was stupid. Can, can you recall those images now you say they burnt you up? What do you mean by that? I remember the one image in particular which was of a young baby boy um, being sexually um, um, sodomised by an adult. Board. And and I think that's about the worst thing that I've seen. And and I, I was very disturbed by it and very angered by it. Do you appreciate that the actions that, that you did entering that site and viewing the material was wrong? Absolutely. Okay. And that by subscribing to Landslide, that five dollars, you caused them to distribute the images of, of, on that site. I, I have to say, in, in, if there's in any, you know, that I, I do accept that. I apologise for what the trouble that I caused everybody in this investigation. I know it's complicated, and and I feel terrible about it. And I, I was trying to do something useful, and I was foolish and stupid and ignorant, and I and I, I, arrogant perhaps is the right word, I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have done it alone anyway. Give me a, give me a call when you're in your way, you're in your way, you're in your way. Ready? Yeah, I tell you what the score is, is that Pete, um, who is it that's going on? Paul. Paul is, is having a guy that will come here in about 10 minutes time. We, we'd like him to come into the back yard if possible, so that Pete can be whizzed away. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they try and get out the back or something. Sean's covering the back. Yeah. Well, I've got a funny feeling we're going to get a bit of a stuff in here. We're going to get a stuff in here. Yeah, I've got a stuff in here. Thanks very much. Good to see you. It's not a problem. Thank you so much for being so solid. Is he getting in? Sorry? Is he getting in the odd? Yeah. Um, I'm just... No, no, I'll come, uh, I'll come back as well. Yeah. I'm going to find my key.
the wrong point off. assess the evidence against him. With 12 computers to examine, it could be months before they know the extent of his guilt. The major investigation team for East London has information that Gerald Crompton is flying back from Thailand tonight. He is one of the group of men suspected of making their own website to sell internet paedophilia. So far, there is no evidence against the others. Crompton's computer has been analyzed. Despite his attempts to delete the contents of his hard drive, forensic analysts have unearthed 400 indecent images of children, including the rape of girls as young as eight. He has also downloaded stories published on the internet, which graphically depict the violent abuse, torture and murder of children. Welcome to Incest Club, featuring Lolita girls fucking with their parents, blowing from father and brother and anal penetration. Nice. While you can make maybe a case for why someone would go onto a site and look at sexual images of children, Pete Townsend defence, because you just checking they were there so you could complain about them. Why would you download page after page after page of stories about small children having sex with adults? Um, why would you do that? The only reason that someone has obtained these is because they're going to masturbate while they read them, and that's what they are. Um, and you don't 
masturbate while reading stories about children being abused unless that's what you want to do, that's what you fantasize about. So, Is there anything wrong with that though? It's a great debate. I mean the, the debate is always if there are people who are sexually attracted to children what is the best way to make sure that they don't actually abuse children? Um, some people, including most paedophiles, argue that if you give them access to paedophile material, whether in the form of stories or images, then that will satisfy their urges and they won't then go on to abuse children. Um, my opinion, and I think experience shows that actually it just reinforces those feelings in them, um, makes it seem more normal, makes it seem more acceptable, um, and lowers their barriers that they may have against the actually abusing children. Because let's face it, when you watch pornography or you read you know, erotic stories, what you really want to do is have sex, isn't it? Your only reason you're doing that is because the real thing's not available to you. So, you know, I don't buy that argument. I think that material like this can only reinforce, reinforce the problem. Um, but at the end of the day, there is no law that says that obscene um, stories are illegal. I'm obviously publishing this in a book would be illegal um, under the Obscene Publications Act, but um, writing it and emailing it to your friends or putting it on a website in America is not illegal. Um, so, but what it does tell me, I mean, is Gerald Compton is a paedophile. I mean, he's not, he's not someone that's stumbled across a couple of child porn sites, been disgusted by it and switched his computer off. He is someone who enjoys the idea that children get sexually abused. Compton's flight is six hours late and it is after midnight by the time his plane lands. He is the last of over 300 passengers to leave the aircraft and he is seen to hesitate before going through passport control. The police believe that he may be bringing indecent images of children into the country stored on small microdrive discs. When they arrest him, they want to take him by surprise so he cannot dispose of any incriminating evidence. But first, they will tail him in case he leads them to an accomplice or a secret address. Because of the delay on Crompton's flight, the airline has laid on accommodation for the passengers at various hotels around Heathrow. Green eight through the barrier and the right right. Contact eight eight. Simon, very briefly, um, you say we're going to follow him to the hotel. If it looks like he's going to meet someone have a drink, we'll let it run. If he clearly is going to um, to book in for the night, we'll get a phone call and then we'll go and arrest him straight away. Okay. unless we do something, okay? And then obviously when we get out, it means we're going to go in so you get out. Just say we haven't called you, that's all. Left, left, into the comfort in. Left, left, into the comfort in. Uh, it's a bit tight there. Have I got a backup? and just go in with it. Hey, sorry. There's a mail uh, off carrying a rucksack and into uh, the comfort in. Is he in reception? He's in reception. He's in reception, waiting to book in, over. Right, what, right, bye. He's in the queue waiting to book in. Okay, well I think we'll go and get him. We'll go and lift him. Right, yeah. we're going, we're going to get him. Right. Oh, 
Come on, come on, get the rest. Get the floor, get the floor, get the floor. Get the floor. Get out of the way. Get the hands away. Right, I'm resting you. Can they start going? See this, come on, go. Resting you. For making decent things as children. Possession of drugs. And possession of decent things as children. I've got to say, you don't have to we should do so, but it may harm your defence. If you do not mention when questioned, something we should let rely on in court. Anything you do, so I may be given evidence. Do you understand that? John Compton, do you understand that? Do you understand your nits? You're arrested. Right, okay. All right, your arrest is timed at uh, 1.26. Right, Gerald, we're going to handcuff you now. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything you want you to put hurt us or hurt you? Yeah. Okay. Right, be, be very, very still. Okay. And this will not hurt at all. Keep your head down. Don't move. Do you understand? Yeah. Do as you're told. Okay. Now, yeah, just... That's all right, that's all right. Okay. Okay. Do some things here. Yeah. It's alright. Okay. Alright. Okay. Alright. Okay. Alright. Okay. Alright. 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 Okay, I got that one. Yeah, so, okay. We'll do front. Yeah. Yeah, it's been easy, isn't it? Okay. Just a bit more comfortable for the journey. Is that medication? What are those tablets there? Viagra. Okay. Right. Is it a very busy place, Bangkok? Oh, terrible. Really? Traffic, unbelievable. Yeah, I've never been there myself. So, it sounds an interesting sort of place. Yeah, most people go, they just go to a hotel all inclusive, don't they? Or, mm. And then the hotels charge like Western Pipers. Right. So you don't get, you don't really get a cheap holiday, you don't, don't meet any nice people. Right. Yeah, I must admit, when you go abroad, it's quite nice to go abroad and to sort of like see around the way yeah. people live, you know. So what I mean, Jerry, in a minute we'll go in there. And as I say, what will happen is that, uh, listen carefully when I speak to the custody officer who's a sergeant, because I'll be telling him exactly what's happened today, the fact you've been arrested, why you've been arrested, um, and then they ask you certain questions about your date of birth, mm -hmm. address, etc., etc. Rested at 1.25, did 1 you say? 1.25 a.m., yeah. The male was handcuffed. Do you have a, a serial number for the handcuffs? The number is 645258. Sorry, 268, beg your pardon. 268, okay. And the reasons for the handcuff? Uh, say, so serious special offence, we feared that he may attempt to uh, escape. your detention here at the police station to ascertain your actions and intentions in relation to the offences that you've been arrested for and also to secure and preserve evidence uh, in relation to the offences that you've been arrested for and to obtain further evidence uh, by means of questioning. Okay. <coughs> okay, I'll take some uh, personal details from you. What's your surname, please? Uh, Thompson, C-R-O, and Peter. And your first name, please? Gerald Perry. Gerald Perry. I understand the officers obviously initially searched you when you were brought in, uh, when you were arrested. I wouldn't authorise a further search whilst you're here at the police station to ensure that you obviously haven't got anything that you might uh, harm or any other further evidence uh, on you at all. So... So I just make an application yeah. at that point. I make an application for authority to do a strip search on this man based on the reasons for this are 
the nature of the offence is uh, we believe he's concerned in a large uh, production of large numbers of these images. Yes. Uh, they, ca they can be transported in items as small as a postage stamp. Indeed, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, all on that basis, listen to what the, uh, the officer said, um, unauthorised a strip search. It's not an intimate search, but it is a search of your, your personal closer detail, just to ensure that you haven't got anything further on you which uh, may be relevant to the offence. Yeah. What we have here is number 31 on the list. It's entitled New Cozy Kid Cunts, in brackets 3. Virgin girls with dad's dick in our cunts. Parents were arrested for it. I'm showing that to you now. Yeah. You can see that. Yeah. You honestly telling me that there's been any, any accident in you accessing certain websites like this? I didn't say it was an accident. They do come up automatically. Okay. Uh, I've been look. I, I admit that I've been looking at them. When you've been doing all of this, you must have. Uh, try. Try to. You tell me that you've looked at them, masturbated, but can't come. Don't even get off. But you try to get off. Yeah. Well, I mean, doesn't happen. Doesn't doesn't turn me on really at all. Why would you try and masturbate over it then, if it doesn't turn you on? I don't know, it's a phase I went through where uh, I was trying to uh, trying to get off on on looking at stuff on websites. Mm. But this is just stuff, is it, Gary? Yeah, I mean, when you show it me now, it's, uh, yeah, it's sick. How do you feel about it now? Uh, uh, disgusted with myself. Well done, as I put you in this area here, and there's no one else here, so you can have an issue that you can buy a phone to And I'll ask you to, um, you know, what's your opinion taking the two calls? Yeah, okay. Alright, can you try that phone? Yes, yeah, I'll get that sorted. Policing internet paedophilia is a huge job. Offenders can have many thousands of indecent images on their computers, and often hide them behind passwords. They may also have deleted the images in the hope that they will evade detection. These can be retrieved, but it can take hundreds of man-hours. Detectives working on Operation Orr now have to wait months before getting the results back from the computer forensic lab. When this suspect was arrested, he denied that he had viewed images of child abuse, but analysis of his computer reveals that he has downloaded nearly 1,200 indecent images of children. As you look through them, they are all of young girls aged between three years and early teenagers. There are a couple of photographs of younger children um, described as you know, babies between a year and 18 months old. We've got pictures here of um, a girl, naked girl, uh, with what appears to be a studded collar around her neck, and she's been, um, her vagina's been pe penetrated by an adult penis. And from her facial expression, there's signs of uh, distress there. It's a, a video clip of um, a young girl having a vagina touched by an adult finger. Horrendous really, because you know it's a child being abused by an adult. When you're working in this field, you often feel that um, these type of offenders never actually get cured. You often hear about the, the paedophile um, committing offences again and again and again. Well, that's, that appears to be the trait of a paedophile. You know, they don't seem to get cured. Um, and they just go on offending. At court, the suspect pleads guilty to 14 counts of making indecent images of children. He is not given a custodial sentence, but a three-year community rehabilitation order on condition that he attends a sex offenders program. He is placed on the sex offenders register for five years. Since Gerald Crompton was arrested at Heathrow, he has been on bail and has now demanded the return of his passport. There is little the police can do as Crompton is allowed to travel.
as long as he returns by his bail date. Make sure it's yours. Not sure passport, I think. And that other stuff as well, which you get. Because we're finished with that. What I'll do is I'll... We've got a Sainsbury's carrier bag going upstairs so you can have to put all this stuff in. Because uh, there's quite a lot of bits. Are you planning on travelling? I don't know at the moment. For, um, was it for when you're back on Bail August? Yeah. But I've booked, a, um, I've booked a holiday with me and my father. Um, a coach trip to uh, Russia. Oh, right. Um, when is that? That's July. Right. He's 90 this year, so... Must be a good good shape for a 90 year old if he can... Yeah, well he won't go on any cruises yeah. again. Police have their suspicions that Crompton plans to leave the country and not return. They keep a close eye on him and receive intelligence that he has booked a flight to Thailand and he has no intention of coming back. Crompton is no longer living at his former address and is found staying with a relative. Hello, Mr. Crompton, I've got a warrant for your arrest. I mean, you have to come with us to uh, the police station. Mr. Compton, can we uh, have you out for a moment, please? Right, Joe Compton, can you just listen briefly to what the officer has to say, because from what he says, He's going to tell me the strength of the evidence against you and I can make a decision as to whether there is sufficient evidence to be put, be put in before a magistrate. So listen carefully, please. Uh, Son, I ask this man to be taken before Romford um, <coughs> Magistrate's Court tomorrow morning. Two reasons. First of all, uh, one of the, he was arrested on uh, Section 1 warrant, uh, which uh, uh, does not give the option of bail. And secondly, he was arrested on a matter of making indecent images of children and we would ask that bail is refused in that instance as well for the reason <coughs> that we have uh, good evidence we believe that this man intends to leave the country um, having previously been bailed from this police station with a duty to return in August and his intention is to leave on this Saturday the 19th not to return to the UK. And we have written statements and we have, a, we have a statement as far as it can be obtained, yes. yes. Mr Thompson, I'm satisfied that there is sufficient evidence against you to charge you with 13 offences. At any time, I must remind you that in answer to these charges you do not have to say anything. It may harm your defence if you do not mention now something you later rely upon in court. Do you understand that? Yes. Right. Um, the first charge is on or before the 16th of January 2003. Essex, you made an indecent photograph of a child. This is contrary to Section 1 and Section 6 of the Protection of Children Act, 1978. Do you have to say anything about that? Bear in mind the caution I gave you. The second allegation is to a different photograph, but it is exactly the same wording. Is there anything you wish to say about that? Mm. Third one is to a different photograph, but it is exactly the same wording. Is there anything you wish to say about that? Mm. Fourth one, same wording, different photograph. Mm. Fifth one, same wording, you wish to say anything about that? Mm. Sixth one, mm. Could you turn to your right please, Mr Crompton? When the police started investigating Gerald Crompton, they believed he was one of a group of associates travelling abroad to abuse children and obtain indecent material to sell on the internet. And then turn to your left. 
they do not have the evidence to prove that the group was involved in the commercial production of internet paedophilia. Today, the operation ends with just Crompton at court. He pleads guilty to 13 counts of possessing indecent images of children. He got a total of nine months imprisonment. He put on the sex offenders register for 10 years. He got a, what's called an extended license as well, which means that when he comes out of prison, he's got to behave himself for a further three years, otherwise he goes back in again. Um, yeah, and he was taken straight down to the cells to uh, go to the local prison, uh, which is Pentonville. Happy? Yeah, I mean, it's um, obviously come a long way with Mr. Crompton. We're, we're, when the investigation started, we, we suspected he was involved in much more serious matters. But given that we ended up with the possession, nine months is um, about right, I think, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it, it's a fair sentence. It's not a harsh sentence, but it's fair. In the last 20 years, there has been a 15-fold increase in crimes involving images of child abuse. The success of the Internet is generating a massive workload for the police investigating paedophilia. The rock star Pete Townsend has been put on the National Sex Offenders Register for looking at child pornography on the Internet. The former Who guitarist was arrested in January. He was given a formal caution today and told that no charges would be brought against him. The police found no indecent images of children on Townsend's computers, but he was cautioned because he admitted paying to view the landslide website. In a statement, he said, I accept that I was wrong to access this site and that by doing so I broke the law and I have accepted the caution that the police have given me. The Internet has massively increased the availability of indecent images of children. Some psychologists who work with paedophiles argue that it is not only catering for an existing market, but is increasing the number of men who have a sexual interest in children. In other words, the Internet is creating paedophiles. If you've been affected by the issues on tonight's program and would like to speak to an experienced advisor for details of organisations that can offer information and support, you can call the BBC Action Line on 08000 839 839 or call the free and confidential and lines are open until midnight every day.